Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Made in Abyss Season 2, Episode 9. So, last time was a really weird episode for me because, not that the episode was weird itself, but I, I had mixed feelings because I really liked how much it tied so many of my questions together of like, well, what's the village, like, why is the village there, like, how can you ascend inside the village and not get affected by the curse? They talked about it being a like some kind of creature originally, and uh, why everyone turned out to be the way they were, and and all that. And it's like all of pretty much everything got answered. Like there's not there's not too many questions left, and it was like it was really cool to see. But then there's the other side of it where it's extremely tragic for Iramui and. You know, I, I I think I'm leaning more towards being on the side of Waco, where, like, sure, maybe this wish-granting egg did this to her. Maybe there was a small part of her that did want what happened to her, but I don't think it was entirely, like, I don't think the wish went the way that she wanted it to completely kind of thing, you know? Like, I imagine she wanted to be able to give birth, and the Cradle of Desire just gave her some kind of weird, distorted version of that, you know? And sure, she might have seemed, like, happy at first, obviously, until the first child died. But the fact that she repeated that cycle of, like, happiness, it dies, sad, you know, it gives birth to another, happy, you know, she never got used to it kind of thing is just, it's just tragic. And, and the whole way that town originated, and I can understand why, uh... Faputa wants to just destroy it all, being the the final offspring of Iramui, carrying the all the anger that Iramui felt in her last moments. So, but yeah, I'm curious to see where we go now. Are we? I mean, that's pretty much everything that Vueco knows, right? Because then she was trapped and could only really sense things. So now we are probably back in the present for majority of the season obviously we might flash back a little bit here and there but i'm not sure anyways let's get started with the episode and find out all right we're gonna start here in five four three two one now reg's gonna oh Ugh. Immortal, okay. Uh. Just leave it to him. Alright, so she's able to walk out of that barrier casually. I was a little worried about that. Mmm. Ugh, those eyes. Jealousy. I see jealousy in those eyes. All 
Oh. Interesting. Huh. So, I mean, we obviously know Faputa is the one that led them there. And right when they got there, they took the necklace and started working on it. Um, or the Prushka, essentially. Um, so I wonder if that's like why Faputa led them there. And if that's the case, why? Like, why does Faputa care about Prushka? Ah, oh, it's so painful to see, like, Iramui is so happy in the opening. It's like, I just want that to last forever, that poor kid, you know? Let's just stay right there forever. Nothing ever changes. No, get rid of that egg. Go away. The return. Uh oh ah hmm Yeah, okay, we're gonna go back to that. I was gonna say. Ah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, that's what I thought about the incinerator. So burn, yeah, burn up that hole that sh the like the gel wall that apparently Faputa can't go through. Ah, uh, he knows. Yep, of course. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess that was the... Uh, they were a suicide trip. Yeah. <laughs> if they break the barrier, can they leave then, too? Ooh. Yeah, it's deeper down. <laughs> Is Rico gonna find a way? That's why they want children! Oh shit! I didn't think about that! That's why children have so much value! Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, we're still we're really shaking. Ominous. Oh. It's uh Yeah, it's this guy. Jeromoy, Droimo, something like that. That. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? I don't know. Ma! Uh oh. What is that? Quick to give in to despair. Oh, fuck, that's his name. What? 
that. Interesting. Well, shit. Oh, God, he evolved. Oh, no, it's going to be the thing from the opening. Ugh. Oh, never mind. Not yet, anyway. Ugh. It's the noise of Oh, shit. I can't get a read on Wazukian. Damn. Uh Jeez. Jump through one of the holes. Oh shit, that's not good. Do we have to incinerate her? Uh, it's trying to get it. But it doesn't really want it, it wants to stop the kids, right? That's not good. I'm gonna sneeze, I think. <sighs> Excuse me. Incinerator. But if it goes like through him and goes through the wall, that could give Faputa a way in, even if Reg doesn't want Faputa to come in, right? Oh shit! Jesus! Did that do enough? It almost looked like I just nicked him a little bit. But yeah, it's hitting the wall. It's gonna go right through, isn't it? I guess it took a pretty big chunk out of him. Is that enough to kill him?
<laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. There she is. Can we talk to her? Can we... Can we... T oh, shit. She looks pretty crazy. Shit, and he's repairing himself? Jeez. Oh, it was him. Oh, shit. The voice change. Jeez. I wonder if, like, it's possible that Faputa is mistaken of what Iramui's wishes and if Iramui could somehow she lost her ability to talk but somehow find a way to communicate with Faputa to stop her but maybe that's a crazy thought Jeez. Oh, healed. All those wounds. It's crazy that she's there to, like, destroy them all, seemingly. And they're just happy. Jeez. Oh. She dreamed about... Hmm. Damn. So she see that because of Bailaf? Maybe? Whoa, that was like a smooth transition into the ending. I didn't even realize that's what, like, that's where we were going. Damn, what a crazy episode. I feel like there's so much to unpack in this episode that, like, I'm, I'm worried I'm not smart enough to fully unpack it all properly in, like, what they were, like, to really understand all the points that they were trying to get across kind of thing, you know? Like, I feel like there's going to be a lot that, like, whooshed right over my head, but.
That was crazy. Damn. All right. Is that that is it? Alrighty, guys. That is it for episode nine. So, yeah, like the obvious stuff is that we learned that Wazukian still wants to continue his journey, even though it seemed to a lot of people that he was content here. You know, this was just essentially the entrance to the Golden City that he he saw after. But the thing is, is he, his journey kind of got stopped due to the illness they faced and they had to kind of, you know, barricade themselves in the shelter in order to live. But by doing so, they got locked inside and couldn't leave. And so he was never able to continue that dream of his to descend the the pit further and, and continue his adventure. And obviously some of the others didn't want to speak up about it, but also wanted to uh, continue the, the adventure as well. So, um, and then obviously... It's a little confusing, but I think I understand Droimo. So Droimo is... So Droimo, Dro... Droimo was created to... As like a guardian for the village. But it's like, it's really confusing because there is the aspect of... Uh, Faputa being created with the anger of, or at least what, what Faputa thinks is the anger of Iramui and wants to destroy the village. But Droimo, Droimo was created by uh, Iramui to protect the village. So that's where, like, my wires feel like they're getting crossed and why there's, like, a part of me that thinks, like, is it possible that Faputa is mistaken on Iramui's desires? Like, uh, like, what if Iramui is, like, and I know they say that she's, like, I don't know. I don't know that Iramui is actually dead. I think she, because they keep, they keep flip-flopping where I think they did say that she is dead. Maybe they never said actually dead. Because I know they said, like, she, she doesn't have the strength anymore to, like, transform the people that go through the bar barrier, which is why Rico didn't get transformed when she went in, uh, and then there was also the lines of saying, like, she's no longer able to speak or communicate or anything like that anymore, so I'm, I'm slightly confused in regards to, like, what state Iremui is in, like, is she just unable to communicate, but she's still sentient, like, does she still have that, that sentience, could, is it possible that she could communicate with uh somehow communicate to Faputa that she doesn't want this she doesn't want the village destroyed before it happens kind of thing I'm not sure I could be very wrong about that it's just a theory of mine but also I apologize if the frames on the video are a little off I noticed it earlier and I I quickly tried to fix it but I don't think I did and uh and I wasn't sure quite how to fix it, but I was also running out of time and I had to start recording. So the frames on this video might be a little uh a little jumpy, so hopefully it's not hopefully it's not too annoying. It's weird because I think like the I think my camera, because I can see the preview on my camera, I think it looks fine, but it seems like OBS is kinda jumpy for me. Um so I'm not sure I'm not sure what's going on there. I might need to reboot or disconnect and reconnect my uh, capture card or, or something like that with my whole setup. But either way, sorry, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you see it being like kind of frame jumpy, I apologize. I, did, I just didn't have time to fix it and I figured, you know, it's only capturing my face. I figured it probably wouldn't be too, too bad, you know, without, without like a crap ton of movement and everything. But, um... But yeah, I don't know if there's a way to communicate, if that even is, if it really is Iramui doesn't want this place destroyed kind of thing. But it just feels contradictory, right? That Faputa was created with this anger and desire to destroy the village, whereas 
uh, Droima was created with the sole intent to uh, protect the village. But it's also interesting that uh, that Aram Yui used the signals from Voiko to create Droimo after the guy who assaulted and took advantage, you know, and essentially, you know, probably, um, I mean, it was pretty clear that he raped her and everything. Like, it's pretty crazy that Iram Yui took that person to be the guardian of the village. And I'm not sure why that is. The only thing I can think of is technically he was the guardian of Waco. Even though he did all these terrible things, he still was her guardian, right, at the time. So maybe that's why she did it, like, trying to take, like, a parental figure to protect everything kind of thing. I don't know. But that's that's really the only thing I can think of as to why he would be used as, as, uh, as the guardian of, of the village, but... Who knows? But yeah, it was interesting because because it was created by the village. It's not affected by the sorting, which is also a uh, an interesting loop. So like we couldn't even give him the arm and hope that like or even if he steals the arm, you know, it's not the sorting isn't gonna stop him kind of thing. In fact. It seemed like some of the stuff that he was firing out was, like, kind of the same power that the sorting was using. So, I don't know. It was pretty crazy, though. But Faputa is now inside. It was interesting with her voice changing the way it did. I guess she's always talked in the third person. I was going to say she was also talking in the third person. So, is there, like, another personality in there that, like, came out for a second? But... And it swapped back and forth a couple times of, like, that serious voice back to the, you know, childish kind of higher pitch voice. And uh, and then I think it went back again one more time. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's interesting. I feel like there's a lot to unpack and a lot I didn't, like, fully understand in this episode. Um, but... I also have a really hard time of understanding what Wazukian wants, right? Like, it seems like he's a decent guy in some aspects, but then there's other times where, like, here he's watching and he's like, oh, it looks like he blocked them off. Good job, Droimo. Like, like, like he, he wants them to fail, but then it seems like other times he wants to help them. So it's like, I don't... I don't always, like, I have a really hard time figuring out what, what Wazukian wants. Like, I guess we did, we were told what he wants this episode, so I guess, like, but if, if, uh, Droimo is trying to protect the village, that would mean that it would be protecting them from ever getting out, wouldn't it? So wouldn't Wazukian want the kids to win? kind of thing. But also, sometimes I, I feel like I might be misinterpreting his... It's almost like indifference that he has. And sometimes I... When he's indifferent about our characters, sometimes it feels like he's against them. Um, but maybe that's just me reading it wrong. Because a lot of it does seem like, you know, he's like, oh, indecisive, you know, what what is he going to do now, kind of thing. And um, it's almost like he doesn't care either way. But I don't know. It's just, it's really interesting. But we also had the reveal that he wants, uh, whatchamacallit, it? he wants Rico to use the Cradle of Desire. And it like just dawned on me that with that whole flashback, we learned that the Cradle of Desire is best used on kids uh, because of their innocent minds and, and everything to, to be able to grant wishes a little more a little more clear than adults or, or anyone that's older, which is why in this village, children are extremely highly valued because if you have, if you own a child, you know, you could give them the cradle and, uh, and maybe get whatever wish you want kind of thing, assuming that 
you can get the child to wish what you want wished for, right? Because there's still that aspect as well. Like, I guess it depends on how the Cradle of Desire works in, in that regard of, of how it grants wishes. Because, like, if Rico used the Cradle of Desire, there's no way to know whether, like, if the Cradle of Desire acts on your, like, deepest wish, Rico's is not going to have anything to do with his village, right? But if it's if Rico can actively think of what she wants of like freeing this village and and everything, then that would work and and everything. So I imagine it works that way since that's you know that was what was revealed is that they want the they want these kids to use the the cradle of desire. But it makes so much sense that that that's why kids are so highly valued in this village is so that way they can utilize the cradle of desire and yeah uh, oh my god i just that epiphany that like dawned on me in that moment of being like that explains it cuz i was wondering like why i think i said in one of the other episodes i was like is it just because like a lot of these hollows can no longer have kids of their own so kids are highly valued because they want someone to raise kind of thing they still have like those parental urges but no they just want they just want a dummy to wield the cradle of desire for them um but it makes so much sense after what we learned last episode and it just there was so much in the last episode it just didn't even dawn on me so but but yeah crazy 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 uh we got confirmation that faputa is immortal i think we kind of knew that already but uh but at least we already know how to kill immortals, right? Because Miti was immortal, and the only, I guess, the only way to stop Faputa is probably going to be Reg's incinerator, which he just had to use, and now he's going to pass out. So we're probably going to have to wait until, uh, until he uh, gets that back. But I kind of already said during the opening a little bit of my thoughts in regards to the. Uh, Fapuja saying, you look very nice now to the the White Whistle, the Prushka, you know? Um, it's it's such an interesting thing, and I feel like it could mean a lot of different things. I'm, I'm really curious what, like, the author intended for that to mean, and I wonder if we're going to learn more about that. Because, like, I guess Fapuja has anger towards... All the people in the village that manipulated uh, Iramui and, like, took advantage of Iramui's body and lived inside of it. But Prushka was on the outside, so technically, I guess Faputa might not have any gripes. Kind of like how Faputa likes Reg, Faputa might be okay with, you know, Rico, Nanachi, and... Uh, granted, she did seem to have some jealousy towards Rico. I don't know if that was just her desire to destroy the village of why she looked so, like, angry and empty when she was staring at the, the entrance there. Or if it was just her being, like, kind of jealous of Rico because, obviously, she likes Reg and Rico is the reason that Reg keeps leaving Faputa, you know? So... I imagine there's some jealousy there, but but that also might explain why she's okay. If if her anger really is just only towards the people in the village and everything, that would explain why um, she kind of assisted Prushka. And I wonder if she kind of relates to Prushka in a way, being like... being turned into this... I mean, essentially... Prushka has been immortalized, right? And, uh, and Faputa is immortal herself. Maybe there was some kind of resonance there between the two, and that's why she led them there to, to get help. And I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it wrong. Maybe, maybe her intention wasn't for the, the whistle to get trimmed down and, and altered and everything, but just that response just seemed weird of saying, like, you look very nice now in, in looking at uh, at Prushka closer. So, very, very interesting. But, but yeah, the it's really interesting the, 
the dynamic where some of the like they obviously see Fuputa as their their princess so maybe being destroyed by their princess is why they're so happy but it's crazy that like they're 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 like all happy there as Faputa's like charging at them. They're like, "Yes, my queen, kill me." Um. But man, like the things that Faputa was saying before she came into the village, um, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, ba 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 ba. See, that's. That's where it almost feels like someone else was talking through, uh, Faputa. I was just looking at the line again. Reg, you have my thanks. Faputa will not forgive you all, which Faputa does talk in third person, so that doesn't seem too odd. But, but she says, my siblings and Faputa... You glared at us with hungry eyes. Faputa will not forgive those eyes. Your mouths speak in the same tongue my mother did and spit out prayers. Faputa will not for So she did say my mother. I think it is just Faputa. I think just the... I, I got so torn by that line of saying like... Um... Like your... Uh, what was it? Your eyes and Faputa's or whatever. Like, I guess that is just another aspect of Faputa talking in, in third person. But the different voice and then the third person talking almost led me to feel like, oh, uh, maybe that's like, maybe somehow Iramui is talking through Faputa's body briefly. And her eyes changed a bit too, but her eyes have changed like to six different forms in the season. So I don't know. Like, maybe there is relevance to, like, the different forms her eyes are in. Or maybe it's just artistic license kind of thing, you know? Of, like, portraying Faputa's emotional state through what her eyes look like kind of thing, but... Yeah, Faputa will not forgive your very lives, which you have continued to live on for so long. Faputa will not forgive your intentions, your joy, your sorrow, your activities... Faputa will not let any of that continue. Faputa will never forgive your existence until you turn to worthless dust. Jeez. Faputa was born so that all this will not be forgotten this day, this moment. You know not how Faputa has longed for it. Hmm. And they're all, like, cheering when she says, like, I'll eradicate you now. <laughs> Unless they're, like, yelling in fear. It's kind of hard to tell with their expressions and everything whether that's supposed to be, like, fear or not or, or whatever. But anyways, um, yeah, crazy, crazy episode, guys. Like, like I said, I feel like there's so much to unpack and everything. And then we also have Nanachi having, like, the dreams, which obviously I feel like the dreams were probably given by Balaf. So maybe Nanachi got Balaf's perspective on the things that happened, you know? And, uh, and she was able to, like, see through their eyes. And she said, like, they're a lot like us, which, I mean, I guess that comparison was already made earlier in the episode where they were adventurers that were trying to get to the bottom of the pit, so maybe that's what she means by they're a lot like us kind of thing. But, uh... But, yeah. Anyway. Very, very interesting stuff. I'm really curious in, like... Bailoff was like, it's no more time for dreams or whatever. Like, I'm just... I'm really curious of, like, how this is all gonna end. Like, what... Is this, like, 12 or 13 episodes? This is episode 9, so we have, like, probably at least three more episodes, I would assume. Man. I'm just really curious where where this goes. I still think there's room for maybe somehow to quell Faputu's anger. Uh, I wonder, because, like, Rico was looking at her like, like there was something she wanted to say, you know? But, I don't know. 
I don't know if that will happen, like, in anger through all, like, how long, I don't even know how long it's been for, like, Faputa and them and all that, but it had to have been a long time that Faputa has been wanting this, so I feel like it won't be too easy to, to reverse that, but anyways, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Crazy episode. Probably so many things that I missed and I didn't get to unpack properly or or maybe a lot of my thoughts on it are different from how you guys thought. So let me know what you guys think of this episode and and what uh what different you know what different thoughts you have to the the different things that have been said because I feel like there's many ways to interpret a lot of the different things that were said in this episode. So but yeah, thank you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out the description if you want to see my Patreon, where you get access to shows that aren't even released yet onto YouTube. So if you want to check that out, like I'm watching Mob Psycho, Lucifer, things like that. Um, I just started releasing Cowboy Bebop, but the rest of that is on there as well. So all kinds of Patreon exclusives and, and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.